after looking for a transom window for our uh, French doors in our living room, um, I was unable to find the size or style that I wanted, so I decided I'd just try building one. Um, I did previously build it, install it, and we've gone through a, about a week of different weather, you know, rain, um, 60 degrees, then all of a sudden it gets down in the 20s at night. I wanted to make sure that it wasn't going to fog or have any weird problems. Um, first window I built, um, so kind of did a little bit of testing on it before I actually kind of will show you the steps I did to build it. Um, I got a hold of a company in Florida, DK Hardware. They supply all kinds of stuff from pool supplies to window building tools and you know parts. Um, I'll go over those, the receipt of the pieces that I needed. It was rather simple. Um, you don't need a whole lot of equipment. Um, I couldn't find what we were looking for. There are some custom companies out there. And by the time you get done building it to the size that you want, blah, 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 you're talking over $1,000 easily. And I just couldn't see that it was that complicated of a project once I actually kind of located all the pieces that were needed. So I'll do a good um, video on how to build the window. I'm not gonna get detailed into how to install it. I'll throw some pictures at the end, kind of through the process. Um, I didn't really step-by-step -step document installing the transom above the door and then building the cornice box, which was the whole reason this project even started with a transom window. Um, the, yeah, as you'll see in the pictures, our windows were really tall compared to just the standard height. I think it's like a six foot eight or something like that, it's just your standard door height. And it just kind of looked off. So it started off with, let's do a cornice box for the uh, curtains and the curtain rod to hide up in. But then I just couldn't figure out how to fill in that weird gap in between the top of the door. That's when we thought, hey, transom window, cool. And then went down the road of finally end up just building my own, which is pretty much on par. I like to just build stuff instead of buy it anyways. So a little different. Uh, most of my stuff is kind of car related, but I do a whole lot of vinyl work and you know anything building wise around the house. I've done a whole bunch of outdoor projects, put windows in and doors and all kinds of stuff. So uh, this isn't super far out of my wheelhouse, but it's a lot different from my YouTube channel anyways. But I couldn't find anyone that actually wanted to build an exterior window. There's a handful of different um, companies and that kind of stuff that were showing you how to build interior transoms, which are just single pane. I mean, there's really, that's pretty self-explanatory, a piece of quarter glass, boom, you got yourself a transom window. So doing the exterior was, I, I couldn't find a whole lot. That's why I decided to make this video. So hopefully you enjoy. I went through uh, dkhardware.com. Um, the total for all my items was $180.23 shipped. Uh, the thing about these guys is a lot of the stuff you have to buy is actual bulk, like these uh, corner spacers. I need four. I had to get 100, but I mean, you're not talking much money. So I got about $180 in the material to actually build the window. Um, the one nice, nice thing that I found about these guys is if you click on any product, um, we'll just say this silicone foam. What they do is they'll give you all the descriptions of the product itself which was very helpful kind of figure out what you're what you're getting um but the thing that really blew me away was these pdf files that they give you and it'll give you all of the technical data for the sealer that i picked out um basically shows you how to apply it even and the if you look here they give you two different pdfs on creating a insulated glass um, they, offer, they offer kits that come with everything they think you need. Um, you can also pick and kind of pull whatever you want out of these, search in their part numbers, you know, that kind of stuff. So this was one of the most user-friendly websites that I've found, uh, especially for kind of learning how to do a project of this scope. Uh, they shipped really quick. The prices were good. The shipping was only, I don't know, 20 bucks or something like that. So... So I've got some standard, just primed, pre-primed, um, one by six, eight footers, plenty of extra length there. Uh, one thing I wanted to tell you is my door frame is actually um, four and five eighths of an inch wide. If you have a table saw, if you don't know this already, they have the measuring tape to get you close, but what I've found is they're always off. So I will always set it for what your uh, measurement on the table says. And then literally just go against your fence and measure to the actual tip of your uh, blade. 
and that's a really good way if you're working with trim or anything like that what we're doing here you want it just as perfect as you can get so and this is fine for ripping down sheets of plywood or something but if you're going into what we're doing here just make an actual measurement it takes a few seconds and really saves your butt so i'm gonna rip them down first i'm gonna put the full lengths through it that way i'm not trying to use little tiny pieces and gets dangerous so i'll rip these down noisy and kind of a self-explanatory just wanted to give you that tip to measure just the very edge of that tooth to here and that'll be exactly what your cut distance is uh, what i will be doing is wood gluing and finish nailing this whole structure together um, i'm going to put the factory primed edge towards the exterior you can go with a, a poly board if you want I didn't see much reason in it since it's under the overhang pretty tight. It's going to be out of the weather. Um, also, the door frame itself is standard pine metal, pine wood anyway, so I'll be painting that you know, every couple of years anyway. So this is what I decided to do. Um, I did leave just a ever so slight bit of room to make sure that the glass did fit on both edges. Uh, once the glass is made and the special sealant is in between the two panes, you trim it down with a um, utility knife or something, and then I will be using um, silicone sealant all the way around it on both sides before I put my corner round in to lock it in place. So I'm going to get this thing wood glued up, nailed together, and that will be pretty much a wrap for the day until my pieces come in to be able to mount the window in. So now that i got my box built, or my window frame, uh, just a lot of wood glue bunch of two inch finish nails the glass is going to be held in with this one inch quarter round and that's just purely for the look that we want uh, all there is left is to cut the 90s into size um, this is also where you're going to be setting the depth of your glass uh, i'm just going to do it the same as the rest of the windows in the home um, they're all about as tight to the uh, inside edge as you can possibly get the trim work and everything so to keep everything looking the same, the glass will be sitting roughly an inch to the inside, and a pretty straightforward project from there. So I'm gonna get these cut and nailed in. Now that I got the pieces cut, pretty easy project. Um, I always cut them just a hair long. I like to be able to set my trim in by actually having to bow the center of it, push it flat gives you a nice tight joint on the ends if you are off just a hair some paintable caulking makes it easy i'm going to paint this frame anyways so i plan on getting this set um i mean worst case scenario is i've got plenty of time for my wood glue to cure but uh, that'll pretty much wrap up the frame pieces that i can actually build today without having the glass assembled um yeah, it's just a matter of waiting on Postal Service to bring the package to me, and we'll keep moving forward. Biggest thing was I wanted to make darn sure that I had my joints tight, even, all the way around so the glass sits down comfortably on it. I will be putting a silicone bead around all this anyways just to help seal it and hold it in place. But that's as far as I can go until the glass is built. So yeah, you wait four days and this is what you get from Postal Service. Well, that's really cool. Yeah, that shouldn't have a problem, right? All right, cool. Let's get to building a window. So even though my pieces were bent so bad that they broke, um, I think I'm lucky enough that they were far enough up that I'm within about a half an inch. Uh, so what I'm gonna do is actually, instead of trying to get these people to ship me more stuff, these 100 pack of spacers, there's a good inch. I think that if this thing doesn't butt all the way to the end, it'll be just fine. So I'm just gonna cut them where they're broke off at. 
that's kind of a fun part of doing your own projects anyway, is having to deal with stuff like this. So I'm gonna clean everything up good. Um, I got some tack cloths that I use for painting that I'm gonna wipe them down. That's gonna be the biggest thing is just trying to get this clean and dust free because any smears, anything like that, you're game over. So. Hey, wouldn't you know it, I got lucky. So I'm gonna keep, like I said, probably between quarter inch and three eighths of an inch. I'll just use a simple angle grinder to cut it. So once I get all of this stuff assembled, just silicone it down and you got yourself a window. It couldn't be much easier. I got maybe 10 minutes in it so far. I'm gonna clean up both ends really good then get to putting my material inside of the tube and get the show on the road. So I'm gonna clean in both sides just to be able to see any smears or anything. I got it pretty clean, just the shop towels. Found a couple pieces of MDF just to lift up off the ground. So I'm smoothing in the filler, the uh, adhesive, makes it a little easy. Uh, one thing I do notice is it's gonna be kind of fun to keep this aluminum piece halfway flat across the whole show. Uh, luckily I got three quarters of an inch to deal with just as the trim so you don't see it inside. Uh, I've got some spring clamps and stuff so once I get it situated I'm gonna put the spring clamps around it. I'll glue whatever I can access around the spring clamps and then just slide them over a touch when it gets time. So I'm getting ready to stick some gloves on. Um, about time to break open the absorbent. Uh, <laughs> It's going to be interesting. I hope that stuff's very fine because there is a very small opening to be able to fill it up with. So what I'm opting to do is fill the channel first and then glove up, final wipe down, set the frame and set the glass on. Um, just trying to open this can. They sound kind of coarse. If you ever dealt with uh, gunpowder, it sounds very similar to the shaking of gunpowder in a tin so I'm hoping this stuff's fine or else it's going to be just a nightmare to fill these tubes. Here we go. Oh man, this is quite the tin they got it in. Ah yes, okay. Tiny little beads. Very small, shouldn't be too bad. I hope you can see that, I have no reference. I'm just gonna take a uh, cup of this stuff. It can't take very much, even though you're buying it by the five pounds. I would think that the... Uh, that should be plenty. Calibrated eyeball. like that. Nice and overfilled just the way I like it. Whether I have a little too much than not enough, so we're going to call that cool there. And there is our first piece. Not to bore everybody to death, I'm going to do that three more times and be right back. So I went ahead and got it kind of squared in there. Um, putting the clamps on, you can just very easily touch it before you put the clamp on and lock it down. I did go ahead and double check with my tape measure that all of my sides are covered past the three quarter mark to make sure that it doesn't show once the, uh, the holding trim is installed. So it looks like right there is where she needs to live. I'm gonna get the caulk done out, fill this seam in. I bought three tubes. You wanna buy as, definitely more than you're gonna need. And I can't see one side taking more than one tube. If that's the case, then we're kind of SOL because once you put it on, <laughs> if you don't have enough, there's no going back. Um, so fingers crossed three tubes does this.
that wasn't too bad. Now uh, one tube actually did it, which I'm shocked. But uh, as you squeeze this stuff in, you can actually see that inner lip. It'll roll up inside of it, so you know you're getting a good seal. And you can kind of go around the whole thing and just double check as you're pushing it in. It looks like I've got really even coverage, which is awesome. And if you look at it from the outside, this thing is completely airtight now. So now what I'm gonna do, clean it up just a little bit more with a few more paper towels. Let her uh, sit overnight in the heat of the garage. I might put a couple uh, paint cans on here just to give it a little bit more clamping power. But that is one fine looking window. One thing I thought worth mentioning, took me a little while to find, um, is this 877 material that I'm using, the uh, adhesive or sealant, whatever you want to call it. Um, it's been about 24 hours. It's no longer sticky to where it sticks to your fingers, um, but it's still very pliable. Um, it does, I finally found the answer to it. I didn't know if it cured hard or not, but it says permanently pliable. So. I'm assuming that once it stops sticking to your fingers, that's what's considered full cure. Um, it, it's not on the tube, it's not on the instructions or specs or anything like that, but I ended up finding another company that was able to answer that question for me. So just a heads up, you know, I've been sitting here kind of twiddling my thumbs, waiting and waiting and waiting and thinking it's like a, like a RTV silicone, like it's gonna actually harden that much, it does not. So it stays about like the, um, back of a tar paper kind of consistency from what I found um, but yeah just a little heads up on that stuff it's not gonna full cure so give it 24 hours I'm pretty darn close I finished up my uh, corner trim or my uh, corner round so I can actually start assembling this window here shortly one thing I've been losing a little sleep over well not losing sleep but just laying in bed thinking about while this was curing um, was making sure that I lined the two panes of glass up perfectly I spent quite a bit of time um, just making sure, like I said before, they were off about a, I can't remember what it was, an eighth inch, sixteenth of an inch. So getting the feeling of each corner and everything to make sure that they're flat. Um, I figured what I'll do, instead of trying to lift the glass in and siliconing it and all that stuff, if there is required uh, widening of the framework, I want to kind of test fit it. So I think I'm just gonna leave it here kind of elevated and try to set the frame over the top of it and it slides in. Great, if not, you might hear a grown man cry like a little girl. We'll see what happens. <laughs> oh, please fit. Oh. We're good, let me get some sealer. So this is the special secret what pros use for putting windows in, trim, that kind of stuff, uh, from Cyroflex, Duocell. Um, I am actually incorrect. One of the one projects that I had someone else do for me was a very large picture window that we put in. Um, it was way more than a one-man project. They put like six people on putting it in. And I like to look at what they're using, how they do things. So I kind of watched the whole process and saw them whip this stuff up. Never heard of it before. And I use all the stuff from just the box stores usually. Um, and it's not very good. Um, that's about six years ago. I looked up uh, my last receipt from that window and um, this is what they used. He actually gave me a couple tubes of it. Um, if you can find this stuff, get it. I don't know if you can get it on Amazon, eBay, you have to order it from special retailers. But this stuff, six years later in Southeast Tennessee, still is just, looks like a brand new. So I'm using this for sure. I got two tubes, it's gonna be plenty for my project. I recommend it highly. Let's get to installing this window pane into the actual framework, which should be just as simple as we're gonna be to this and then wood gluing the inside trim strip. We got ourselves a window to install. Now that my sealer is all opened up, I'm gonna run a bead of the super juice on the inside. Um, 
set the glass down. That should seal it pretty nicely against the framework. Uh, this stuff is also an adhesive I was reading on the back of it. So instead of using the wood glue on the exterior corner round, I'm gonna put both the bead on the glass itself and on the window frame itself smooth it with my finger and use that as both the sealing and the adhesive to help with the uh, nails holding it in place. Um, this part I'm actually pretty nervous about because if one of those nails doesn't drive correct and it hits the glass, then start overtime. So I am going to bring in an extra pair of hands to help put the glass in place. Um, I think the workbench is about perfect setup for this for two people to be able to set it in evenly. I don't have to worry about the adhesive mushing wear or anything. So, get to it. And as you can see, I just ran about a eighth inch bead all the way around, about the middle of the trim, and. Uh, Kind of stuck a little extra in the corners just because there was a little gap in between the trim obviously but yeah we're ready to set the glass in i'll get an extra pair of hands in here quick i'm hoping to see a little of this actually squish out onto the glass side to confirm i've got an excellent seal um, i'll definitely be doing that on the outside trim pieces that hold the glass in i'm going to be doing both this surface and where the glass contacts so we should have double the sealing power on the outside all right, bring in the big help on. today. All you need to do is pick this straight up. Okay, under here? Yep. Okay. And then we're going to set it over the top of this box, okay. reach underneath, Open through. Like this. Okay. Okay. And then we're going to try to wind up in the box. <laughs> and then just set her down nice and easy. I have some glue squishing out here. <gasps> What'd you do? I was up. It's fine. It's all I was doing. I was doing that on purpose. Okay. Perfect. That's all I need. Big on. That's it? Yep. Wow. What would you do without me? <sighs> Not be building you a window. You know, I can say I helped build this. I'd bring in the boss. <laughs> <laughs> now that I feel pretty good about the amount of sealant that I put down and adhesive, whatever. Um, put it on both the glass and window frame. I'm going to start, got a little drunk down there. <laughs> uh, I'm going to start putting in the trim pieces that I already cut and I pre-fit just to make sure that I didn't have any problems since I got this stuff glued out. So that and a row of one inch 18 gauge nails and we can call window construction complete. I'm very excited for this point, and I'll be very excited when the air nailing is done and the glass remains unshattered. So after it's all said and done, we have ourselves a very nice looking window. That will be fairly easy to install, I would think. And it turned out a little better than I was expecting. Uh, it's kind of nice to be able to see the um, sealer adhesive squishing out up into the glass. Uh, you'll never be able to see that from where this window is positioned, but that'll pretty much do this part one of DIY window installation.